The Nature of Reading Introduction In this study session, you will examine various definitions of reading as given by various experts and scholars in reading as a discipline. You should know that some elements are important to growth in reading. Such elements include physical health, mental health, intelligence, and background of experience. All of these play a great part in the way you grow in both speed and comprehension. Other areas that you will be exposed to in this study session include technical concepts in reading, what do we read, and reading and learning. This study session therefore provides you an overview of the nature of reading. It is necessary because it provides the foundation for other information that we will discuss in the course. Learning Outcomes when you have studied this session, you should be able to 1. Identify various definitions of reading 2. Identify the technical concepts in reading and 3. Differentiate between reading and learning Definitions of reading You will be exposed to the various definitions of reading in this unit. Moreover, you will be afforded the opportunity of understanding the nature of reading by being taught those elements that can help your growth in reading activities. What is reading? There are many things you do so often and yet you are unable to define these actions. If I ask you to tell me what reading is, even though you have read all your life, you will stop to think of how to define it. When I asked a class of students who just gained admission to Faculty of Arts University of Ibadan, this question, what is reading? One answered, reading is reading. The class was amused. Then I said, I know that reading is reading, but you have not told us what reading is. These were students who had just read to pass the school certificate examination and the jump examination. They had also read the long jump forms with accompanying instructions. When you discover that you cannot define a concept or a word or an action, you take the easy way out. If you are asked, for instance, what is a descriptive essay, you too will lazily answer a descriptive essay described. This is what happened to the question, what is reading? I believe you are not going to accept that shortcut definition, are you? Now, you can have a view of the various definitions by experts on reading. Cybill James, author of the book Reading for Academic Purposes, says, Reading is the process of communication through which most formal learning takes place. It involves understanding written language. Through reading what an author has written, you, the reader, set out to understand and respond to the author's message. Page 9. In addition, Bond Thinker and Watson, authors of the book Reading Difficulties, define reading thus. Reading is the recognition of printed or written symbols which serve as stimuli to the recall of messages built up through the reader's past experiences. In short, the reading process involves both the acquisition of meanings intended by the writer and the reader's own contribution in the form of interpretation, evaluation, and reflection of these meanings. Page 5. Gertrude Ildreth, in a book, Teaching Reading, defines reading thus. Reading is a mental process involving the interpretation of sign perceived through the sense organs. Thoughtful reading requires the interpretation of word groups in the context the author has employed to express his ideas this requires the making of inferences, judgments, and critical evaluation of the printed statements. Page 2 From a list of definitions given by Dahlman and her co-authors, I am selecting the shadow versions of the definitions of reading for your benefit. Reading is an act of communication in which information is transferred from a transmitter to a receiver. Page 13. Reading has been described as social interaction between the author of the book 
and the student. Page 14. Reading is the meaningful interpretation of printed or verbal symbols. Page 14. Now you should have considered the important facts that you can glean from these various definitions of reading. 1. Man communicates through symbols. In reading, you employ visual symbols. 2. Comprehension is an essential aspect of reading. Without comprehension, no reading takes place. 3. Competence in the language in which text is written enhances your understanding of what the writer is saying. 4. What the reader brings to the page is as significant to reading as what is actually written on it. 5. If you are familiar with the topic being discussed or with a related topic, your understanding of the content will be greatly enhanced. What do we read? Your casual observation of people's activities reveals to you the prominent role of reading in their lives. Let us start from the everyday newspaper and magazines. Personally, you feel the absence of newspapers on the streets on any public holiday. You feel that you have missed something if by 2 p.m. you have not read the day's newspapers or nowadays you have not heard any headline news stories on the net. In fact, some people read newspapers in areas. In addition to newspapers and magazines, you also read novels, journals, and books. You read from the television screen or captions at film shows. Furthermore, you read from billboards and notice boards. During political campaigns, you read sky writings, posters, and manifestos. From newspapers, magazines, journals, and reports, you read graphs, maps, and statistics. You also read the Bible and the Quran. It is through these sources of the printed word that you come to understand your sister society and your roles as citizens. As workers, and individuals with personal needs and problems. As a matter of fact, Ogunbe, 2014, page 30, says, Reading is a psycholinguistic problem-solving exercise which actively involves the reader in the process, decoding and assigning meaning. Now, you should examine how reading helps you to understand your society in relation to what you read. Each source mentioned above can be grouped under the following purposes. 1. Reading for recreation. 2. Reading for fuller personal development. 3. Reading for self-education. 4. Reading for information. Moreover, in your childhood years, you read for the following purposes. 5. Broadening children's horizons, shaping attitudes, learning, and studying, ETC. Nature of Reading you need to know that reading is a complex process. To the non-expert, reading is simply making sense out of attaching meaning to what is written. However, to the expert, reading is much more than that. Therefore, it is an interaction between the writer and you, the reader. It is a continuous process. It is an active process. And it is for academic, recreational, and transactional purposes. Moreover, you should know that in your occupation or any activity you undertake, you need reading. Today, it is scarcely thinkable that you can achieve success along any line without the ability to read. In fact, in order for you to lead a full and satisfying life, you must be able to read with clear understanding. Reading like its related language skills, listening, speaking, and writing forms part of a complex information processing system. Information is passed from the author of the writer to you, the reader. Elements that aid growth in reading. It is essential to end this unit by looking at some elements that are important to your growth in reading. See graphic representation of reading below. Let us examine each of the elements in the above figure. Physical health. You should know that a reasonable measure of physical fitness is essential to all learning. Physical discomforts such as fever, fatigue, hunger, toothache, and headache may interfere with your normal reading progress. Mental health. 
The truth is that you need to feel secure, to feel accepted and loved, to be able to read well. Again, you perform better in any activity if you have self-confidence and a strong desire to achieve. Obviously, you cannot read when you are anxious or frustrated. Intelligence. It is a fact that a fairly close relationship exists between intelligence and the ability to read. You definitely have a chance of success in reading if you possess average or above average intelligence. Undoubtedly, the environment in which you grow has an effect on your intelligence. Background experience. Success in reading depends on the experience you bring to, to the printed page. Your experience may be direct or indirect, which you have accumulated in advance of the reading. Purpose and interest. The desire to read is the motivating force that leads you to reading. It may be your desire to have needed information or to spend a pleasant leisure hour. The number and types of purposes for which you read are almost unlimited. Similarly, you read what interests you. To read efficiently, there is the need for you to be motivated. You must constantly bring to mind the purpose for which reading is carried on, and your interest in the areas must be sustained. Technical concepts in reading. In this unit, you will be exposed to the technical concepts associated to reading as a communication skill. You will be taught the meanings of these concepts as they are used to explain reading. You have been taught earlier that comprehension is an essential aspect of reading. This means that you cannot remember what you have read if you do not understand it in the first instance. So you should aim at reading not only to remember, but also to retain the information for subsequent recall or reproduction or application. The following terms need brief explanations so that you will be able to understand them very well. 1. Recognition 2. Comprehension 3. Retention 4. Recall 1. Recognition As defined by Uno in his book, Reading to Remember is the process of seeing the familiar or relationship of a stimulus. Example, a word, a phrase, or an idea, to something previously known but apparently forgotten or not thought about. This means that word recognition refers to your ability as a reader to recognize or identify the meaning of words as they appear on the printed page. Recognition of words phrase or sentence is very important and basic to reading no matter at what stage you are. 2. Comprehension Comprehension means your understanding of the thought beneath the printed word. It is your ability to grasp the author's thought not in isolated fragments but as a whole. For instance, you cannot write a summary of a passage if you fail to understand the message delivered to you by the author. If you attempt to summarize a passage without first understanding it, you will merely pick up in the author's words. Your speed of reading is also important in comprehension. You cannot read a new material at a rate beyond your level of development and expect to comprehend such material. Certainly, you cannot store something you do not understand. 3. Retention Retention means your act of storing in the memory or of organizing mentally into familiarly meaningful units, information, facts, or other expressions that you have understood. You receive a great amount of information through your sense organs. You definitely cannot retain all. It is after you can recognize the words, phrases, or sentences and comprehend such information that you can retain it. One reason that you easily forget things is that you are unable to register or decode the message properly in the first instance. You retain what you understand and recall what you retain. 4. Four. Recall. Recall is the measure of what you can actually remember. You can easily recall any information that you earlier recognized, comprehended, and 
retained. You can remember the above better when graphically perceived as follows. Difference between reading and learning. In this unit, you will be shown differences that exist between reading and le le learning. The last item leads you directly to reading and learning. As soon as a child gains some measure of skill, reading becomes easy or a basic tool of le learning. B books are al always identified with learning and studying at school. Psychologists have defined learning as a relatively permanent change in behavior due to experience. One of our definitions of reading can confirms that reading is the process of communication through which most formal learning takes place. Reading is an independent way of learning. Therefore, this means that reading is the skill you need to acquire learning. Learning is something you achieve throughout your lifetime through reading. Reading is a means to an end learning. The processes that your mind engages in when reading include Thinking, predicting, questioning, evaluating, defining, and redefining. All of which make learning possible. It is when you read and understand that you can say you have learned something new. As it has been pointed out, there is a permanent change in your behavior as a result of learning a new thing. You learn to read when you are young, but you read to learn progressively as you match up. You cannot learn unless you understand. So. The link between reading and learning is comprehension. Let me end this unit by quoting Thomas Jefferson. People who read can be free because reading banishes ignorance and superstition. Study session summary. In this study session, you have been taken through various definitions of reading, the technical concepts in reading, and differences between reading and learning. All of these have been able to help you to understand better the nature of reading and how reading itself aids learning. End of study session one. Thanks for listening.